Hello, my name is Chris Mufflard and I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome to the Schedule Planner Video Training Series Level 5, Optimizing Crew Allocation. In this vignette, we're going to cover the concept of tasks having their own production rate and how we would adjust task line slopes to align task production and optimize an LBMS schedule. Let's get started by navigating to Level 5 in the Schedule Planner workflow. Now let's just isolate the superstructure in the custom view that we created previously. Each task has its own slope based on the quantity of work, productivity data and resource allocation. The problem is that the slopes will not naturally align. If you think about it, duration is a choice rather than being dictated. We will aim to align tasks by adjusting the resources to match the slopes. We need to start by identifying converging and diverging task lines, like the form beam, form slab, and form column task lines. So in this instance, we're going to start with the form columns activity. We must first start by hovering a cursor over the task line until you see the single arrow. By left clicking and holding and dragging the line to match the slope of its predecessor and successor and letting go, you can note that the set durations dialog has opened. This dialog prompts us to make a decision. The default setting is to change the number of crews. Vico Schedule Planner calculates the number of crews required for your desired duration. See where the old duration was 125 days, the desired duration was 39, our new duration is now 41.8. If you choose to change the crews, we can also redefine the optimum crew size and set the number of work groups per crew by location. Alternatively, we can modify the production factor, as we saw in the previous video. Choosing to modify the consumption is assuming we have an incorrect assumption in the production data, and as we know, changing consumption is changing hours per unit of work. We would set the method to adjust the crew size, and as we know, when we balance resources to optimize the schedule, we must be realistic about the number of crews or resources that our trade partner can commit to. Let's click OK to set our total number of resources to 3 for the form columns activity. When we identify bottleneck task lines, such as trades with large overhead real estate, for instance dry horizontal duck, we may need to optimize around them. The resource balancing dilemma highlights the importance of combining location-based management systems and quantity-driven schedules with collaborative pool planning sessions. Let's finalize the optimization of the superstructure schedule by adjusting the crew sizes to the outstanding unoptimized activities. To finalize the optimization of this schedule, we can use some of the methods that we learned previously in Chapter 4. Knowing that concrete pores will never be continuous, we can start by making those ASAP only. Finally, we can also use a location lag to ensure that the completion of the superstructure is shown continuously, one floor completing before the next floor above can start and be completed. Start by selecting the dependency links tag, selecting the strip slab task, drawing a dependency line. In this case, we're going to do a level two dependency, selecting the floor above, a location delay of two, clicking OK. It is important to note that we have now compressed the schedule in such a manner that does not introduce any additional risk, but provides us with a realistic plan that reflects the intentions of installation for the superstructure's phase of work. In this vignette, we've introduced the concept of finding the project's natural flow by adjusting the crew size, production rate, or consumption factor. We've also shown you how to adjust task lines to optimize a schedule.